Hello, and today we're going to have a look at the test tube reactions that you need to know for the organic analysis part of Year 12 Chemistry. The first functional group we're going to have a look at is the alkene group. Now the test here is one that you've come across at GCSE Chemistry as well as at A-level Chemistry and you may remember it's to add bromine water and of course we need to shake it to make sure we get a good result. You are often asked in exam questions about the observation that you would make for a positive result. So observation remember has to be what we see and in this case our orange bromine water solution turns into a colourless solution. It is very important we do not say it goes clear. That is not the same as saying it loses its colour or turns colourless or it decolorizes, all of which are acceptable. But just to repeat, clear is not acceptable as an answer here. The next functional group is the alcohol group. The test here is to add acidified potassium dichromate. Now we have come across the oxidation of alcohols using acidified potassium dichromate, but this can also be used to test for the presence of an alcohol. The observation that we will make if we have an alcohol present is that our orange acidified potassium dichromate will turn into a green coloured solution. It is particularly important to note though that this will happen only with primary and secondary alcohols, not with tertiary alcohols. So this does not show that a tertiary alcohol is present, but it will show if a primary or secondary alcohol is present. This therefore makes this particular test useful for distinguishing a primary or secondary alcohol from a tertiary alcohol. The next functional group, aldehyde, has two tests that we need to be aware of. First of all, we can add Tollens reagent and warm, and the observation we get here is that a silver mirror forms, although in reality this is sometimes a black colour precipitate, and that is also an acceptable positive result in this test. But in an exam, it is easiest to simply say a silver mirror forms as our observation here. The second test that we need to be aware of is to add failing solution and to warm. And the observation we get here is that our blue colored failing solution forms a brick red colored precipitate. We do need to be aware of both tests because although they'll ask us only to suggest one test, they may give us the results of either test and expect us to be able to interpret it in terms of what functional group is present. The next functional group we're going to look at is the carboxylic acid group. Now here we add a hydrogen carbonate or carbonate. Now in the exam we will be expected to name a hydrogen carbonate or carbonate we could use, but any hydrogen carbonate or carbonate is fine. So for example, you could use sodium hydrogen carbonate, or you could use sodium carbonate, or you could use calcium carbonate. But you must name one in the exam. Simply saying adding carbonate is again not acceptable. The observation we would make here, well, we would observe effervescence. Remember that is bubbling or gas being produced. However, we should not in an observation attempt to identify the gas that is being produced as this would not be an observation. So the gas in this case, we would expect to be carbon dioxide, but we must not say carbon dioxide produced or bubbles of carbon dioxide produced as that will be marked incorrect. The observation, remember, is simply what we observe. So effervescence or bubbles of gas produced are the acceptable answers here. The last functional group we're going to look at here is the halogenoalkane. So that's when we've got chlorine, bromine or iodine attached to a carbon. 
The test we've got here is very similar to a test that we've come across in the halogens topic where we tested for the halide ions. First of all, we warm our halogenoalkane, or our suspected halogenoalkane, I should say, with sodium hydroxide solution. That causes it to decompose and to form the halide ion if it is present. We then acidify that by adding nitric acid. We must not add hydrochloric acid, because of course that contains a chloride ion and would give us a false positive result. And lastly, we add silver nitrate solution to test for the halide ion being present. The observation we would make was simply, if we were to observe that we had a halogenoalkane, we would see a precipitate being formed. But as we know from the halide ion tests, the color of the precipitate can indicate which halide is present. So for example, with chloride ions present, we would expect to see a white um, precipitate, with bromide ions present, a cream colour precipitate, and iodide ions present, a yellow precipitate. So from those colours, we could deduce which halogenoalkane we perhaps had present.